Welcome back to Armchair Generals. Tom here with the next episode in, uh, in my Hearts of Iron 3 Black Eyes version 12.0.3 for my Japanese campaign here. We are picking up kind of where we left off uh, last episode. I say kind of because quite honestly um, I've done a little bit here to uh, make some changes. There, um, what I, I talked about last uh, episode was uh, once I start off, or before I start off this episode, I was going to work on arranging all the uh, my units and stuff like that, and I took a little bit of time to kind of uh, do just that. There aren't really any um, units that are kind of like, you know, free out there. Um, these are being transported uh, to China. Oh, geez. Wow, they're going to cut before they arrive. But anyway, they're, they're getting transported out here to help um, uh, fill out some of the some of the units that need need just that. But everybody else has pretty much, for the most part, been associated to a um, to a headquarter unit, and hit those units in turn have been associated appropriately as well. For example, uh, Quantung, we can take a quick spin through here. This is pretty much the bulk of my my fighting force for the most part. The, uh, the Truck Island Headquarters does have the Marines associated with them. Uh, because the Marines are honestly going to be fighting quite a bit in well, in that theater. Though, if we look at theaters... Uh, look here. Where, where, where? Edit theater. Um... I have to kind of decide if I'm going to put the Philippines over to truck island or if it's going to go more to Kwantung, or if i'm going to build a brand new southeast theater which i might that might be uh that might be prudent for me here yeah so far i mean this is Kwantung theater but what i might do is just create a brand new southeast asia theater and just assign you know just pull pull all these guys put them over to that um and just leave make sure i leave um Leave the Quantung Theater behind and put all of the defensive units uh, towards towards that. Yeah, that might be something I'll, I'll do. We'll, we'll take a look and see once we get the war going. Which, speaking of, we are getting awfully close for October 24th. This was phase one, was working on getting all of the um, units arrayed properly so there wasn't any, there aren't any. Um, Floating free here. The few that are, they're just simply uh, units that um, don't either have anybody associated to them, like everybody here. I mean, there's a good dozen right here that aren't attached to anything yet because they don't have anything attached to them in turn. Uh, we got like this coming around. We're gonna, I'm going to attach this horse transport to one of these uh, Mountaineer headquarter units. And we got the 8th and 14th, which are basically anti-aircraft and artillery. Um, four artillery, six anti-aircraft brigades. Then I'm going to be attaching to um, units uh, throughout China here. For example, I'll probably put uh, an artillery and an anti-air here on the conscript. These militia units probably do the same thing as well. Uh, this guy definitely going to attach to kind of beef them up. Um, the Kempatai, probably not going to mess with. Um, probably these uh, do the same thing for like this, uh, this or these two garrison corps. There should be one and one other down here, I thought. Maybe I just have the one garrison. Maybe it's just one garrison corps and two Kempatai that I have. But anyway, we're going to do, you can fill out the forces there. We are in the process of, oh, we got to attack here again, but we got to wait. Uh, we are in the process of surrounding uh, Chengdu, which is the final uh, ROC province uh, victory point location. We um, will take that timing wise. We're going to take that uh, probably same day we, we declare or go to war with America. That way we can maintain our military footing, maintain our IC presence here, industrial capacity, make sure that's that's going good. Uh, I need to beef this up a little bit here because we gotta get our units kind of ready. Um, oh yeah, I gotta explain a lot here too. 
we got a lot of stuff we need to build, so I want to take at least the next uh, six weeks here. Um, make sure that I maximize uh, and utilize all the IC that we possibly have. Focus-wise, national focus, um, I think we have spun towards... Let me make sure. I'm clicking on Navy right now. It's showing 367 days, so I, I definitely need to have turned to Navy by now, if I haven't already. Because uh, 360 is that cutoff, or after that, then it drops off to the, the stage below. Economy, we're at 242 days, so we got about 150 days that I could go through here and maintain the same level in Navy that I'm at, Stage 2, uh, and the same Stage 1 in Economy that I am, so I get the, the benefits there. Just to kind of recap on that, too, you can see these are the the um, all the, the benefits we're receiving for uh, for the Naval and Economy, uh, economy focuses. We're, when we give up uh, the ROC, ROC, when we take it over December 7th, we're going to lose out on quite a bit of that production that I see. Probably drop down about 350 if I had to make a guess. Might be a bit better. But we will be getting a, another puppet. And it'll be one of the ones that will count towards this, the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. Or the seven seven and a half percent, uh, yeah, that's that's only I guess about sixteen, eighteen, maybe twenty, about twenty IC. So that's not going to make up, you know, switching the level to um, this phase or level or whatever you want to say is not going to make up for what we're losing for holding on to uh, China in regards to IC, a strict, you know, how much in uh, industry do we have turning towards our projects, but we gain a bunch of other stuff like uh, improved supplies, resources, IC efficiency, lowered uh, revolt risk, uh, national revolt risk, and uh, various other things that help us out here. A, uh, a doubling of that leadership modifier from 5 to 10 percent that would net us about a point and a half just about so i mean that's another project right there that we can uh, we can certainly put towards towards here we're doing pretty well i honestly i feel we're doing all right uh, technology wise i kind of want to spin through everything real quick here uh, just to kind of get everybody back on on track again timing wise republic of china nanking we're not going to hit that until november 7th and x men chuko um if i feel like cheating a little bit i may go ahead and hit it and then re and then puppet them again but i don't think i'm going to do that i'm just going to let that sit there and just you know it be what it, it is what it is kind of type deal um <clears throat> Production wise, you can see we're around 476. We I think we had a high of around 530 almost, but we've got 15% of our total base there, which that's 35 I see almost going towards uh, roads, rail, seaports, airports, and also we had the Southern Seas expansion preparation kick in. So yeah, that's that's another 10 I see alone right there. So about 40 I see almost 50 IC, I would have to say, is going towards a bunch of stuff that just popped up, populated very recently. Um, the roads, rail, seaports, airports, those will start dropping off here pretty soon, and two of them, I think roads and rail, but it might be seaport, it might be the opposite, seaports and airports, I think, will be dropping off come April of next year. So we'll be getting boost of IC over the next six months here. We are also doing very well with our resources. I mean, it may not look like it, quite honestly, but if we really, really, really need to, I could, I could stop some of these trades here um, uh, that are making me some money. We don't care about the energy, quite honestly. It's almost a thousand days. That's 750 days. We can go two years easily that we can go and still lose that. Same, um, honestly, with the metals, it's almost three years we could go and still maintain that loss. Rare materials, that's also about, uh, well, uh, it's not that bad. That's not quite a thousand days. Actually, I'm saying that's a thousand days. Is that accurate? No. That's about a hundred days, right? Man, my math is like going wonky today. Yeah, it's about that's less than a hundred days. So wow, we got to definitely do something about uh, about that. Do, do, probably the zinc and manganese shortage is really hurting us there. Can't really do 
too much about that. But anyway, resources, the important resources is fuel. <laughs> I think we maxed out our fuel almost. And also depends too on when we take the ROC out, what do we get out of it? You know, how much how much booty loot are we going to receive once we uh, jump into their into their uh, last province? Um, so I'm not terribly worried about all this. We're going to war in just a matter of uh, six weeks here, so you know, 50 days, less than 50 days. So all this, uh, they'll start fluctuating a little bit. We're start going to start getting a, um, a whole bunch of territories that'll help us improve our resources or get some bonuses. It'll start uh, working out in the wash. While I was going through and moving units around, assigning uh, divisions to headquarters, local headquarters, and putting headquarters into logical place and stuff like that, there were some headquarter units that were at that combat frontline headquarter units that were assigned to um, a uh, the uh, uh, Dalinay, the uh, uh, this headquarter unit here. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> That's not. Yeah, that's not uh, that's not good. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, uh, we do have a few things we're going to be getting finished up here. The Hayo is going to finish up uh, after war starts. Unfortunately, we already have a uh, carrier group here. The sixth Kaigun or eighth Kaigun, eighth Kaigun. It already has the, the Junio, so the Hayo will go there and uh, fill that out. We've got a uh, fighter group that will be getting finishing up here next month in a couple of weeks. That they're going to get attached to the last guy here. Yeah, uh, no, not him. This guy here, uh, fighter ace. They don't fighter aces don't have too much range though. Actually, it looks like he got upgraded a bit. He's up to 307 kilometers. I, I thought they were like 125 or something like that. He's up to oh, no, that's regular fighter. There's the others. 307. So there must have been some upgrades completed because I thought we were like the amount of range that uh, the fighter aces had was insignificant. Yeah, they're about where the fighter aces are not too far off of what the regular interceptors have. So yay on that, I suppose. But anyway, um, with the exception of the, these two interceptors, all the uh, interceptors that uh, group. Um, groups, wings, that have fighter aces. I'm going to seed them uh, when it comes time to deploy, which will be next month. Um, <clears throat> we'll be deploying them to forward bases. Uh, for example, this one, as it's just, well, it's not just off, but it's not too far away from Wake. We'll send one down here because we're very close to Guam. And then we'll send probably one in truck and then the other one at, um, ugh, can never... Well, either Enwit Talk or uh, Kualin. I'm not sure which, but just to help protect the those major islands. Uh, once we get uh, Wake, we'll move that that wing up to Wake. Once we get Guam, we'll pull that wing out and move it down here or something like that. Just that way we can we can utilize them in a defensive force. They, their range is fairly minimal compared to regular. Uh, regular interceptor wings, so I only want to use them in a defensive manner in case the Allies, America, pull up to my island with a bunch of carriers. Uh, we'll be able to, they'll be able to start knocking them down. The other two interceptor wings I've got will be they'll be getting um, sent to the towards the front lines to help out in that area. Um, going further on production, I think that's it that we have coming out this year. Just the high and that last fighter wing. Everything else that we're looking at building. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, everything else comes out next year. But nope, that's not true. Two Tropical Island Garrison units that I'm building for Wake and Guam Islands. Two um, brigades, two sets of brigades that I'm going to attach to my uh, uh, paratroopers here. I got two paratroopers. I'm going to split them up in half and put each of those guys on. Um, are you giving them named? I'm going to give them named headquarter units here. Uh, do we have airborne attack on these guys? Does not quite... S I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be airborne attack just because. Amphibious attack, yes, but not airborne attack. But these, in any event, these are the named guys are better than the veteran headquarters. 
by far. I don't think the veteran headquarters have a, have some extra stuff to them that the named guys don't, or vice versa. I think the named guys have more things. But yeah, the um, the named guys have all the new terrains that are available, which if you're joining just <laughs> at this point in the game or whatever, uh, or you've forgotten, 12, uh, t version 12, which is what we're playing on right now, introduced some additional um, terrain types here. We can switch to simplify and you can kind of see that breakdown. Um, obviously, you know, we got urban, but here we have hills, woods. It's combining both hills and woods together into that same uh, province there, mountain forest. Um, so we got hills, regular hills, but we also have hills, woods. So there's a lot of combination of different, um, like we got regular mountains still, but they, they also have mountain forests. They have, um, oh geez, uh, all kinds of mountain woods. Um, I think also up north here, Arctic woods. Yeah, they've, they've combined a lot of different, um, terrains together to, uh, better accurately depict the provinces that you're fighting in to provide bonuses, penalties in that in that area. So if you're fighting in mountain woods, for example, you're getting, I believe, you're getting the effects of both of those types, uh, those terrain types in that area. Um, but yeah, that is that just comes up to just basically say that yeah, I think I'm going to send named two named guys over. Uh, we're going to make this kind of weird, I think. I got two Yamashitas. <laughs> um, I may just send both the Yamashitas up to here and attach them. And then once I get these two guys combined, then we've got five brigades, regiments associated to each paratroop unit. I'll see how that works. But yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff that's going to come out next year. Got a bunch of uh, backup CAG that'll be getting ready. Got another fleet, uh, two fleets of landing craft that'll come out as well. Got uh, like like carrier group uh, coming uh, spring. Uh, well, I guess summer, effectively of next year. Forty three, spring of forty three. We've got a regular carrier group coming out churning out convoys and es extra convoys and escorts just because we're going to start losing, uh, especially convoys, we're going to start losing those quite a bit. Not that we're going to worry about any of this stuff because we're just going to import stuff. I'm not going to worry about, um, or, or we're exporting, we're exporters with all of our goods. I'm not going to buy any goods from anybody unless it's somebody next to me, like say maybe the Soviet Union, but now, <laughs> you'll see why I'm not going to be able to buy anything from the Soviet Union in just a moment. We're, we're going to go over what's going on in Europe and stuff. But a lot of this, um, sending out uh, convoys to help support, you know, provide supply and fuel out to all the far reaches of our, our space. And in fact, I've got to go through. I don't need to do it right now, but I probably will do it next month. I need to start re uh, eliminating a lot of these extra... Um, uh, supply drop-off points here don't really need them. I don't need all of them. Uh, I just need select like, you know, uh, one or two up north. Uh, Shanghai, sure. Uh, the one down here, sure. Um, but I don't need all of these. There's a good half dozen or more of those that I can go ahead and, and pull off and say, no, nah, we're not going to do that anymore. <sighs> really would prefer not to supply my islands quite so much, but I mean... You know, they're stepping stones to get to uh, Japan, so I don't want to be pulling units off, so I don't have to, so I can avoid supplying it, and then watch the United States roll in and, and throw a big fleet on there. Um, going forward through here, I uh, got another, um, so I got two carrier groups actually coming in 43. Uh, light carrier group, um, one that I'm going to be finishing up this year here, so I'll have eight carrier groups by the end of the year. I'll have a ninth ready by uh, summer of next year, and then two more by um, spring and summer of next year, two regular carrier groups. We're still in the process of building these transports, uh, transport planes, just because I'll have two paratroopers I'll use in some function. I'm not quite sure what, but we'll, we'll figure that out. 
bunch of uh, mountaineers, 10 mountaineers are going to be coming out. Probably a bit too late to take in, into um, Burma. But we will need them in, in India a bit. And if I have to go into Nepal, that for sure. Would I have to go into Nepal? Uh, they're not part of the Allies. Oh, no, they are. Nepal is an Allied member. Yeah, they're at war. So we will need them. We will need Mountaineers later as we get into India. Um, and then eventually, looks like Afghanistan and whatnot, uh, helping out Russia as need be, if it comes to that. Um, and then uh, I've got two motorized infantry uh, regiments that I'm building it's for these two tanks that, that appeared. Um, they've been assigned to uh, relevant motorized core, uh, which now the motorized cores one and two only have motorized units, um, which now when I saw this guy, motorized or armored, you know, so I should say, when I saw this guy, I was like, what the hell is the 48th doing assigned to a, a motorized core? Clicked on him to get rid of, rid of him, not, not get rid of him, but just to uh, cut him off. And then I saw, oh yeah, this is this is one of the late units that I just recently got. We just finished getting the the IC debt cleared on. This is one of, one of these converted uh, infantry divisions to a motorized infantry division. They got even have a light armor battalion, motorized support, motorized engineers, truck transport as well. So I was like, ah, that's right. So the motorized core, yeah, we do have. See, we got four. Seven, seven light armor units and two motorized, or in this case, semi-motorized um, divisions that uh, we'll, we'll utilize. <sighs> we'll have to use, utilize them in Burma just because we're going to need them in India as we race through the Indian countryside there. Um, also started a round of 10 more of those uh, these tropical island uh, garrisons for 10 islands, roughly more that we're going to be capturing over time. As I capture and we move further out in our territories, I don't need every single island controlled uh, by garrisons like this guy. I can pick him up. Well, you know, once once we've got like Hawaii, for example, I can pick him up and, and move him elsewhere. We, we won't need to, to cover every single island that, that close, this close to Japan. But that's down the road. That's 40, 1943. Then I went ahead and was like, you know what? I'm Once I got all my units ready, I was like, before you forget, let me go ahead and put in my shopping list that I've got for this year, even if I can't build it. Now you see, our production need is almost a thousand IC. We're only putting a third of that towards towards it, and of that third, uh, we got about thirty I see maybe. I'll say that's twenty five, and I know these guys will get finished. Uh, forty one, so maybe about fifty, almost sixty I see actually. That's going to get removed, you know, by the end of this year, and uh, will trickle down as it were. But even that's not going to be enough. You know, we'll be down to just maybe 900. So, yeah, still, about a third is what we're shy by. But these are what I would like down the road. Another carrier group, another light carrier group, um, uh, several several um, naval bomber wings that each will have a uh, flying boat associated to them. Building a whole bunch of uh, twin-engine fighters, uh, several of them, as you can see, which I'll be attaching to. Uh, bomber units, the naval bombers, light bombers, medium bombers, just to help provide a little bit of extra protection, uh, air, air to air combat protection, um, and bombing capability as well. I like I like to do that when I play as Germany. I'll build a ton of these twin engine fighters and attach them to all my light, medium, and naval bomber wings, and just put put them all on those, and uh, allow them to help protect those those bomber units. Which speaking of, I'm building another. Two more wings, one medium, one uh, light bomber wing. Uh, some more destroyers, some more CAG for for backup. Um, built, gonna build three three more battle cruisers. There's the Congo coming down the road, uh, and six more heavy cruisers. Bunch of destroyers to match up with these. Uh, what will eventually be three different 
uh, capital um, capital ship fleets. Uh, even if I could put the IC towards right, night, right now, we're two years away before we're able to see any of that. Uh, and all the Marines that I need. I only put five Marines in here um, just for the... Because I've got those veteran uh, headquarter units and uh, and named leaders, so I can just I can assign them to all to those first five. The next five, probably, pro well, I'll probably still get some more named leaders and some more veteran headquarters. So you know, we'll fill, we'll we'll make sure we get all these filled up. That should, and if any of these, if I've got spare headquarters and leaders lying around, and I, I get these built down the road. Um, then sure, I'll pull the headquarter unit off and put the uh, the advanced leader on. So that's what we're looking in our builds here. It's a uh, if I somehow got gifted uh, a thousand IC right now, yay! I would be ecstatic, but that ain't happening. Tech wise, uh, pretty much where we are, what we need to be. The important techs are uh, our fleets, our, our naval forces, and CAGs. Those are our biggest important carrier wise you can see here um, this is the uh, there's certain ones that we can't get like the double hanger closed hanger uh, we, don't, we don't we don't have that technology we're with open hanger but everywhere else we are maxed out to where we can you know we can't research anything here in carrier tech which that's great that means so long as my carriers are upgraded at this point or any new ones I build we'll have all this tech so that's awesome um, our battleships also we're still we're still working on our uh, capital ships that's battle cruisers battleships um, pocket battleships we're not using pocket battleships super, super heavy battleships which yes we will get the Yamato and the Musashi we still got a bunch to do in here well, I say a bunch there's a good half dozen or so that we need to work through there uh, cruiser tech we're actually not too bad off here there's probably about about a half dozen techs here as well. It's 1940, 1941 tech that we need to go through. Transports, we're working through with what we need. Um, in order to get assault ship flotillas, we need to work on invasion tactics and amphibious ship defenses, uh, which we're not going to touch until next year, 1942. We'll get those, push those to the forefront, and once they're done, then get the assault ship flotillas going, push that to the forefront. Once that's completed, then we'll start building assault ship flotillas. We won't need I won't need a ton of them the main idea behind this the assault ship is that they just have their they're just better they carry more I think they have better protection as well pretty sure they do um, uh, actually the landing craft have their own short bombardment that's interesting um, better range better speed yeah they're faster in that regards um so i mean they are better but I mean, we're fine with the landing craft if that's what it comes down to as well um our destroyers yeah they're kind of behind the times a little bit we're not gonna build frigates uh torpedo boats are definitely behind the times but we're working all that stuff there our subs i need there's some tech in here quite a lot of tech that i need to start going through but we'll work on that down the road grand battle plan this is japan's battle plan uh, doctrine um yeah we are hurting here we there's a bunch of stuff here actually all of this i would need to start researching right now unfortunately our land forces are kind of uh, playing second fiddle to the naval forces which i mean the ija you know by the time 1941 rolled around i think the iga was just on the wane right there the ign was like you know we're we had Pearl Harbor. We did well there. We had this. We had that. And, you know, all all these different victories going on, and the IGN just pretty much got all the lion's share of everything. Our CAG, we we need these so we get the next level of CAG, but we're doing okay all right otherwise. And yeah, our we got all this tech in here that just definitely needs to get touched. Even I mean our tanks, uh, yeah, so much stuff that's all around there. We're doing well in far our nation nation. Uh, tech goes because this is what handles manpower leadership uh, industrial capacity things of that kind of nature so I try to make sure that these all have stayed tuned up and uh, maxed out as much as possible there not touching secrets at all with the 10-foot pole and neither we're doing with uh, dealing with uh, jet tech 
Yeah, it's just we're not going to be able to, to handle that. Um, our chain of command. Yeah, we, there's a ton of work that needs to be done there. Uh, that's tech wise. Uh, we are uh, leader wise. I think we've yeah, I've got everything tweaked out just about as good as it possibly can expect right now. Tojo Hideki, you can see him in different roles, of course. He's, he's the head of the government. He's chief of staff, chief of the army. So, yeah, the IGA is like, we're ruling this. That will probably switch pretty soon. The head of the government here, we're going to be switching to uh, this guy here, Kichiro, because we, we want that naval organization. We're going to do that next month, in fact. Uh, chief of staff, probably going to do the... Well, actually, I don't know who we're going to do here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure who I was going to switch to, but I mean, we're okay with what we have here already. Um, yeah, everything else is pretty much set the way I want it. Not a big deal. Intelligence, even though I've got high priority towards several countries, I have no idea what's going on because we have just given up on the spy game. We've put as much as we can towards our uh, towards research and also getting our officer ratio up. I was really hoping we would get into the green at least to 90% before war starts and I feel we should just by by going up uh, you know 130 a day alone like I said we got six weeks here um, if we're getting about eight nine hundred a week effectively over the course of six weeks that's 5400 officers that'll get us up to about uh, 140,000 almost yeah, that's not quite, yeah, that's not quite that 90% mark, but but a month after war with America, we'll get another 10,000 thanks to officer recruitment. Uh, this officer recruitment program, I'm still a bit hazy on some of the specifics. Obviously, it, it indicates that uh, with the benefits for each level, uh, one of the benefits is a bonus officer gain, and the indication is here that these are cumulative bonuses. They're additive bonuses. So level one, you get a 25% bonus gain. Level two, you get an additional 35 bonus gain for a total of 60%. And at level three, you double that with a 50% addition to 110%. So while these are additive, I don't believe the officers that you gain are additive. I think it's you get 10,000 for each level period. It's just that you're getting 10, 20, 30,000 total for each, same as the um, the minus the uh, subtraction there in um, the leadership. Even though it's not showing here in the uh, the the bonuses and penalties, we ought, we should be experiencing a minus five percent uh, penalty to leadership here. Next level should only be boosting that to 10%. Uh, after that, level three is a 15% penalty. Those are, I'm pretty sure those are not additive at all. But anyway, the upshot is we should be okay with our officer ratio fairly soon here. I am going to let time pass. I'm going to stop talking here and let time pass a little bit and I'll get, um, get some stuff go on the road here. November 1st, we're going to redo the officers, probably a little bit later in November 1st, maybe November 7th. We're going to redo officers, and we are going to uh, kind of see what that looks like overall. Uh, oops. We got another one of these things here. Um, how fast can you move? Three. Okay, so let's just have you move in like so and come back out. Uh, we're maxed out there in reinforcements. We'll drop that down a little bit here. Let's see, see how far down we're going. Supplies that should be that should be up to 77, honestly. So I want to I want to hit 50,000 50, supplies before War with America starts because we're going to start going through that like mad. Um, having our upgrades around 75%, 70% mark, I think is fine. I can live with that. Here we go. So these are just headquarter units and boom, they're both dead. We're not going to move into Chengdu. 
Only 55 guys in there. That's amazing. Um, as far as tech, when that pops up, uh, unless it's like such old tech, like 1938 or older, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out. Because uh, once we get to green, once I'm in the green with my tech here, my research, then I want to kind of fine tune a little bit and see see where I need to try to focus my efforts a little bit better. Um, probably will swing towards um, my infantry. Just make sure that you know I'm at 1938, if not maybe 1939 tech that I'm researching or already have. Just so I can get those guys a little better. We don't we don't want to be falling behind too much in our land uh, doctrines, land tech. Um, we are still in the process of moving a whole bunch of units to the mainlands or to other places, I should say, not just the mainland. The um, one of the things I do need to do, I need to take care of this episode is. Um, directing where my forces are going to be going. So I've got like less than three dozen units here that need to be told where they're going to end up going. Um, I guess on that note, real quick then, let's uh, take a brief pause here. Not not pause to the episode, but brief pause to the play. And I'll kind of detail my first round, if you want, if you'll uh bear with me there first round that i would like to like to hit let me take a quick look here okay so this i clicked on the uh, battle plan editor and something to kind of bear in mind this is um all these except for the vice geo are part of the uh the base game any battle plans you make, which you can make your own battle plans. Um, I think it's. An, I think you just. Well, actually, I'm not sure how. I I know you can make your own battle plan. I forget the exact uh, the exact methodology to do so. Oh, maybe it's here. Actually, yeah, I think it's here. You just uh, just start creating. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do here. It's it's fairly robust in regards to you can do like this kind of stuff. And that's the idea behind these battle plans to kind of give you a base where you can look and say, um, what am I going to do in the future? I had a battle plan for, um, oh, I still got to show all this. I had a battle plan for Barbarossa that I did, that I customized and did my own. Uh, just kind of like do something a little bit different. Um, and then forgot the battle plan gets saved when you when you customize it make your own that battle plan gets saved in the uh, black ice modification uh, that version that you're in um, folder uh, game game save folder so if you delete that that particular folder because there's a new version that came out, you lose your customized battle plan. Kind of ticked me off a little bit because I'd spent a lot of time on, on handling it, but there's a lot of historical plans that are available here. You can see there's, um, well, and these are based upon what country you're playing. These, obviously there's more battle plans than this. These are Japan's battle plans. You got the invasion of China, uh, the uh, Pacific, initial Pacific operations, uh, round two of your Pacific operations in, in January 1942, um, etc. There's there's a whole bunch of them. I will utilize those. Not that I follow them strictly or anything like that, but I just simply utilize them as kind of a, uh, uh, a wake-up call, if you will. That's actually in the wrong place. The week I, this, this should be down here. <laughs> it's whatever. Anyway, once we kick, when we're ready to kick things off in December, next, uh, in a month and a half, this is pretty much what I'm going to be following. Um, I'm going to have a Wake Invasion group that's going to be uh, taking on Wake with uh, one Marine unit on their landing craft, along with a about a third um, or so, maybe a quarter, uh, eh, probably closer to a third of my uh, carrier groups, and then a whole bunch of my, my ships as well, which are going to be surrounding this area, trying to flush out uh, the American fleet. Um, and also protect the naval operations that go on there. That'll be, this is all, of course, stage one. 
um, oh, that's interesting. Why does it do? Oh, date the Dateline, date uh, international Dateline there. Interesting that they have those on here like that, but okay. Um, along with that first phase, we're going to have a, a Guam invasion group, another Marine with a tenant landing craft, a carrier group, and one fleet, probably destroyer fleet. Nothing much needs to be needs to be done there. Uh, backed up by by say, uh, yeah, is it close enough? Probably for yeah, that's close enough for close um, close assault uh, planes. Uh, my CIS, so we'll, we'll utilize that there. We have various invasion groups going here into the Philippines. Um, we're actually going to have one here up the north uh, with two Marines, one here with two Marines, uh, one down south here uh, with two Marines, and then one way down south here with two more Marines, uh, backed up by a fleet. Up here, around here, I'll have a carrier group just sailing around, just you know, in case there's any sort of American fleet uh, around that we need to take care of, and a couple other, couple other heavy fleets uh, just to help provide short bombardment strength on all these northern areas. Down south, I'll probably just have a destroyer fleet. That's all I really need down there. Um, yeah, all this really isn't happening in this kind of manner. Once once war starts uh, taking off. When I attack uh, America, shortly after that, I should be receiving a come to the Axis message from uh, Germany. And I'll accept at that point in time, which will then put us into war with uh, Britain, the UK. So then at that point, which stage 1.5, if you will, then we'll be moving into uh, whatever Marines were involved here in the Philippines. We'll be utilizing them for Borneo. Uh, going through uh, Malaya, into Malaya, and uh, we don't need to invade Thailand because it more than likely uh, Siam actually will switch over to my side and we'll get the French, French into China uh, along our uh, to come to us as well. Um, I carry a group in here, I'm going to move down here. The carry a group that I'm that will be built um, shortly about this time, once it's ready, will also be sent down here. So we'll have two carrier groups. Uh, patrolling around in this area that would be pretty much stage one 1.5 now um, there we go let's not let's not do that anymore now I mentioned that normally and historically uh, Japan's will also be at war with the Netherlands but if we look over here there are some craziness that happened in back in 1938 uh, Germany um, did the Anschluss of Austria just fine, got the Sudetenland, and then apparently it was a step too far for the Allies, UK, France, and when they asked for Czechoslovakia, war was declared all around. I guess Czechoslovakia said no, or at least the Allies were like, ah, that's it, what, but whatever the case might be, Germany went to war with Czechoslovakia, uh, Yugoslavia, and for some reason, Romania as well. I don't know if Romania was, um, it was guaranteeing Yugoslavia's independence or something else happened because Hungary joined the Axis and also went to war with Romania and Yugoslavia. You can see the, the, uh, the remnants of that. Uh, Romania was engulfed by Germany and Hungary both. Uh, Hungary got the, the lion's share of Yugoslavia, while, while Germany got some as well as Italy. Um, <laughs> And Poland actually got attacked too, uh, I think also in 1938, and conquered then, well before the uh, the um, uh, discussions between Soviet Union and, and Germany took place, where they would agree to the partition. So Germany had all of Poland, all the way up to the Pripyat marshes here, up to the, the Russian border. Soviet Union never took the Baltic states, accordingly, uh, because of, I guess, what Germany did there. But they did have the Winter War. Uh, and took parts of, of Finland that uh, that they wanted. Germany, while at, while at war with uh, France and, and UK, brought uh, Italy into that into that fold around the time when they were attacking Yugoslavia. That's why Italy has got you know what it's got in uh, Yugoslavia. Germany got attacked by France across the Mag uh, from the Maginot Line across the Rhine, and eventually they beat them back and just held. They just held the line. They never declared against 
the uh, the lowlands here. Uh, Netherlands. Um, why am I not able to see? There we go. Uh, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg never declared, nor against Denmark nor Norway. They've stayed neutral this whole entire time. Italy went through southern France like a knife through butter, hot knife through butter, and conquered France all by themselves. They also took out Tunisia and the very eastern parts of Algeria. They also attacked and took over Egypt. Uh, Germany somehow got Transjordan. I, I guess it was called Transjordan back there. Basically, it's it's Jordan, um, modern-day Jordan, modern-day... Um, uh, Israel, that's what I'm trying to say. Sinai, uh, Sinai Peninsula. Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran all joined the Axis because they saw what was going on and, and wanted to take a chance to liberate themselves from the, the uh, British yoke. And with Italian help, Saudi Arabia has taken the whole entire uh, Saudi Arabian Peninsula back. They control all of it. Italy built uh, a land bridge, you can see here, between uh, Egypt and Somalia, Ethiopia, etc. And they've actually, they have did pretty well themse for themselves. They pushed all the way down to uh, this line here. But uh, it looks like the UK has now kind of jumped over and gotten both of these two provinces. Not a terribly big deal. Uh, they can just hold here in this province against this river. They've, they've got it. They can give up this province as well, or these provinces, I should say, and they'll be fine. Um, but Italy's, Italy's been a major power through all this here. So the upshot is, when we, when we kick off all of our operations uh, against the United States and eventually the UK, we won't have to deal with the Netherlands at all until we're ready to do so. Because Germany has never declared on the Netherlands, and they've basically sat in a, in a uh, state of neutrality this whole entire time. They... Uh, let me select them. They're, um, yeah, they're 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 towards the Allies right now. They're drifting towards the Axis, so they're actually drifting down more towards the Axis at this point. That's a six, almost a yeah, almost six points of moving down. The, to be quite honest, I, that'll that'll hold. And I don't know why Germany didn't take them, but once we start kicking things off down here. Um, and I am comfortable with where I'm at uh, with Guam, Wake, um, the Philippines, and, and doing what I'm doing here in Southeast Asia. Got my units moved into Siam so I can start attacking Burma. Then I'll uh, end. I can get staged up to a point then I'll, uh, in Borneo, and Malaya for that matter. Then I'll declare on the Netherlands, launch uh, amphibious invasions on this port here, so I can march over into Palembang there. Might even be able to have my, uh, well, maybe not, but I'm, <laughs> I might be able to have my transport planes, thus paratroopers, ready for an airborne operation in Palembang as well. I had to suck down some water. Sorry. <clears throat> getting a little throat getting a little dry. So most, most times when I'm playing as Japan, and I go, and uh, December 7th hits, war with the UK and the Allies as a whole starts pretty soon after. Um, I've seen it as soon as two weeks after I have war with the, with the United States. And I've seen it as late as, like, I think it was March of 1942. In other words, a good three months after, four months actually, four months after the war with the United States, that the Allies in turn then declared war on me. I'm not sure why the lateness on that, other than maybe the United States didn't join the Allies, Germany didn't declare war on them. You know, maybe that was the reason why kind of kind of deal. I don't know. Um, we did take a brief spin around here. I want to take a closer look. You can see where uh, Germany Germany still kicked off uh, Barbarossa. Finland took advantage, joined the Axis. In fact, we can look and see who all the uh, Axis and Allies are at this point here. The uh, the Allies really haven't changed too much uh, since that start in 1938. They've gained a few members uh, over time here, but it, it's still the same bunch. Comintern, same thing. They got Xinjiang at some point. I don't know when. Probably 19 late 37, I think it was, or maybe it was 38 or something like that. I saw the message. 
but the Axis have definitely uh, been kind of busy. They even have Guatemala. Uh, let's take a quick spin to Guatemala here. All they've done is take out Belize, a uh, British protectorate. Uh, there's really nothing to it. It's just a it's just a port. There's no there's nothing there. But nonetheless, that's what Guatemala's been up to. And otherwise, they've had no concerns because they're surrounding themselves with neutrals. Once once we hit Pearl Harbor, eh, it might be bye-bye Guatemala. Um, Germany also caught not just uh, Transjordan, but Northern Ireland as well. I don't know how or why, but that's how, that's how it's been for two years, I think. Um, and there hasn't been any change to this whatsoever. It hasn't grown, shrunk whatever. Finland, though, has certainly grown. They've taken back their territory they've lost to uh, Russia during the Winter War, and they've actually taken uh, some Russian provinces. They, the Finnish, captured Leningrad themselves, and you see how far they moved up to this point. They've now joined, they've now met up with uh, with their allies, German allies, and, you know, now have the territory they've got there. Um, oh, there's a got a surround going on there. Um, Germany is a mere, let's see how close, 202, 193, 181. So 181 kilometers at the closest point. Well, let's just say on average about 200 kilometers away from, from the front lines. Um, 193 might be a little bit more accurate than that 181, quite honestly, if you were to say, oh, they move straight here. Don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, Germany only has about a, a, a month left here this year, but we'll find out. Um, they've crossed, Germany's crossed the River Donitz, and they're heading toward the River Don. As I said, if I were playing against Germany myself as a player before winter, I'd be pushing my way all the way up to this river as much as I possibly could all up and down this River Don. Just try to try to get, make that my defensive line for, uh, for winter time. Um, they've also marched through the Crimea. Uh, they've got Sevastopol surrounded, Yalta as well. So that is the status that you're seeing here. A very long-winded way to show how the world is currently going at this point in time. Quite honestly, um, this should be the, yeah, the Axis are doing far better than the Allies, of course, at this point in time. Though the Allies have yet to bring in, um, any of the Americas, whether that be uh, the United States, Central American, or and or South American countries. But once those are brought, you know, once the United States and other American, uh, Central and South American countries are brought into the ally fold, their victory point location, a victory point uh, situation is going to start skyrocketing. They, I would imagine they actually beat out the access for that. Uh, we can kind of have a quick gander if you want. I mean, there's a lot of victory point locations throughout the United States. United States here, Central America, there's a few, South America, there's a few, so there is there is potential here for, uh, for the Allies to start looking much better. That said, too, we got a lot of victory points as well, so once we join the Axis, yeah, we, it might be a pretty close game at that point. But yeah, enough talking, let's keep, let's keep hitting the road here. November 7th, I want to, um, I'm going to start my um, reassignment of leaders. Um, not actually a great choice here to show. Let me bring up like maybe the 104th. So there are some, here we go, the 19th here. You can see this is a, uh, a, a skill five leader. He has a lot of traits. He might be better suited um, in a different different environment, namely like, you know, one of these headquarter units here. Like, I mean, this guy, he's a skill five. He's, he's pretty good. Yes. But if I could give this guy to this headquarter unit, we would be seeing a lot of these traits here, especially that logistics wizard, logistics master. We'd be seeing that trickle down to all the units that are under him, rather than that leader only positively influencing that unit he's associated with. Um, yeah, we'll decline for right now, thanks. Um, 
so yeah, that's that's one aspect I need to take care of. Um, we're gonna I'll jump on that uh, like I said about November seventh. Uh, I'll go through a few just to kind of give you guys a, a little uh, rundown of how you know my thought process goes in that regards as we reset all the leaders everywhere. But I'll, I'll dish out leaders probably well yeah I'll be dishing out the the leaders for the most part off camera there. Uh, I'll, either pause or end the episode in order to accomplish that but I'll, I'll go through quite a few there's hundreds that I have to I have to do though so I'm, I don't want to I don't want to sit there and bore you guys to death with just going through every single unit but you know figure out what leader is going to go where type deal I mean the easiest will be the naval and air because quite honestly I mean you know while there are some improvements on in those areas those leaders sure for the most part, the um, naval and air leaders didn't do as much as the um, the land units, land uh, unit leaders did. So, yeah, level five, and actually, no doubt they've got a couple. The logistics wizard, obviously, it was a um, improvement there for them. Um, but yeah, level level four experience eighty five percent, not not too much there overall. Um, probably yeah. I'm trying to think here. Maybe might look at my carrier here to sort you and hear you. No, oh, not sort you hear you. Um, Kaga and Akagi. So he's been floating out for several years, from thirty seven through thirty nine at least. Um, before I pulled him back, I mean, there wasn't much need for my Navy to be out there. And he's gotten some experience for sure. Uh, he's, but not much at all. Uh, the other, uh, I'm not sure what the other group was. Was it this? No, no. I don't know what the other group was, but yeah, obviously you can tell there wasn't too much that had been done. Um... Naval bombers. I had both my naval bombers out. Not much done. Not much they got. Uh, used quite a bit, yeah, and definitely gained some experience. But yeah, overall, um, here's a destroyer group I know that was out and about. They did nothing. No experience. The sixteen percent experience. They got something. <laughs> they did something, but not enough. So it's not going to be terror bad for my, uh, you know, for for all the leaders that I got to set up. It will just be, there be some aspects though that, yeah, it's going to be, it's just going to take me a while, <laughs> a while to get everything done. <laughs> I have so many units moving. Yeah. It's no wonder we're running, running low or running out of supplies. And my guys are running dry forecast, medium snow, snowfalls increase. We don't really care. We're not doing much attack in those mountains there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to cancel that, as I see. Only if it's 1938 or older tech, am I really going to stick with it? Because I, <sighs> once I get to the green, then I kind of need to figure out. I think it's going to be land forces I'll focus on, but we'll just have to take a look and see you know, where the next round of um, uh, leadership is going to go towards which research projects I want to want to get. Uh, infantry guns advance. There we go. We lost a province. Uh, let's have you uh, come here like so and then back down to uh, back to where you were. Um, okay, so he's attacking. Can we just have you guys come and help out? There we go. Beautiful. Uh, cool. I thought I had these units up here. So we're going to say that. We're gonna, I'll throw the pack artillery. It doesn't really matter what I give them. But... do it like that because I'll send you there. You already have anti-aircraft. From there you go there. So we can handle three units. That's one, two. 
Um, and three, I guess, yeah. So with the anti-air, okay, we need you to come down to here and basically drop a guy off. And there, it's the armored train guy, too. Um, actually, can we stop? Nope. So we're going to go here. And then over to the armored train guy, drop off an anti-air. The others, it'll be this guy. That guy. This guy. Get an artillery and anti-aircraft each. So there'll be three people that will just be able to uh, staff up. Um, so you need to come over here like so. Let's move these guys up to there just to kind of get ready. Uh, and these are... We're, um, when do I have those? Oh. Not until much later, so not, not going to worry about it. All right. Monsoon starts. So yeah, like I said, about November 7th, I want to, want to pause the game in order to um, handle... Um, the redistribution of my leaders. Uh, I think I've got some, yeah, these guys. Rebase. So, uh, you need to add to the uh, Southern Raider Fleet Command. That's another thing I did, too, is I went through and, well, this is a, a nothing burger leader. I mean, he's not really helping. He has no traits to help any of these guys here, and I can't put a leader in here that has traits that would help. Um, uh, yeah, there's no naval leaders that I can put in here. It kind of blows, but it's game engine limitation. You can only put naval leaders on naval units. Uh, these type of specialized units can't really do anything about. They just take land units, land uh, officers only. Um, I try to make sure that I put, like, this is the sub and raider fleet command. I assign all my subs and all my, um, all my raiders to this leader. So that way I know, <laughs> I know where they all are. They're all un under one boot as it were. Um, so everybody that's here, these three guys, they're all associated with, with this guy here. So it should say I've. If I can I select all that? No, I can't because that's yeah. So I don't know how many units I actually have under his command. Do I? Yeah, I'm not. Doesn't really show the number of units they have under the command there, and there's no way they can go click here and, and anyway. This is where they all are. So if I need to get one, for example, you know, I can. Just, if I'm like, where are all my subs? What's going on with them? You know, what, where, where are they at? Go to this guy because he he commands all the subs and raiders, uh, the cargo raiders, and go. Okay, I need this. I need this fleet, and tell them, you know, I need to do such and such. So that's the idea behind that aspect here. Um, yeah, I need to move you over as well. Rebase. Same thing. I also took time. I have a um, a carrier Imperial Naval Base uh, headquarter unit, which this is. It is technically a Navy general, but <laughs> don't have any don't have any traits that I could give to my carriers. But I have all my carriers, as you see, all my carrier groups associated with this guy. Uh, two, four, six, seven, eight. All eight. Which we look here, drop off these two, boom, all eight. That way, again, if I need a carrier, 
this is just a flavor unit. It's not like, you know, he's providing any benefits to the carriers. Um, and it's more for like role playing than anything else too. You know, he, this, we can say this guy has absolutely no experience in running carrier groups, but he got this appointment because of family ties or, you know, somebody he tutored under or whatever the case might be. And all the carriers are here, but if I need one, I'm like, what are all my carriers doing? What's going on with them? I can click and, and get to it. Should be the same as for my all my uh, air, you would think, too. But no, these guys are really just truly just flavor. There's nothing really super special to them. They don't really, they don't, yeah. He actually just has militia and conscripts and, and a garrison unit attached to him. That's all. It doesn't really have air units. That may change. Uh, the next round of um, uh, Air Force headquarters that I get um, and Naval headquarters as well. I'll I will pick those up and and send them create um, create those or, or send those headquarter units to various areas like here we have um, the Truck Island headquarters which is the overall command group for the theater and then a sub commander for that we have a, a naval commander for this whole entire area it's this but if I were able to get a higher level up or or a lower level down. Uh, hey, Courtney, I could put it here in truck or one of these other islands and attach it um, appropriately here. Again, just for flavor more than anything else, but just that way kind of have that, you know, command structure going. Long-winded way just to simply say, yeah, I, I enjoy playing this game because it, it, you can lend, it lends the fantasy of it all very well. Uh, 14th, there should just be a headquarter unit, I think. Yes. Um some divisions as well. Holy cow. Wow. Um, okay, so we've got to do something with all this here. So, yeah, I really don't want this garrison unit being attached to who he's attached to there. Uh, nope, not him. Kind of have to like play around with the leaders to figure out which one he should get assigned to. All right, so at this point, he's going to have to get assigned to somebody, probably directly to the Dalianel, I think. Yeah, just do to the Dynapon. Nope, that's the guy that's associated with the Quang Tongue. Um... Yep, so the Dalian L it is. Alrighty. I'm not going to worry about leaders just yet because we're going to wipe all those leaders pretty soon here. Um, but that's cool. So we got two more units. What's not cool is we're going to be seeing some IC debt. Um, 2358. We're paying 143. So you can kind of do the math there. It's about 15, 15 days. Not terra bad, but we're gonna. We're gonna be, a lot of this is not gonna be built for the next two weeks here. Everything up here is, but quite a bit of this, all this stuff here is just not gonna be. It is what it is. I so I need to send a ship down to pick him up. We will grab this passenger liner, send him on over. And honestly, we're gonna detach from that guy. I'm going to put you towards the second mechanized core. Because now, uh, the second mechanized has a full five units associated with them. And the first also has a full five. Again, this is a this is a motorized infantry. <laughs> so the first has four tanks, one motorized. The second has four tanks, one motorized as well. Eight, eight light armor tanks, which eh, at some point down the road, I may want to upgrade them somewhat, but you know, we won't worry about that. Uh, so this garrison unit, honestly, I just leave it in Taiwan. You weigh too much. I don't have the time to transport you anywhere. So we're just going to move you. We'll just leave you in Taiwan for right now. 
at some point it might pick up units out of Taiwan just to utilize them. You know, I know I'm building 10 tropical island garrisons, but I don't need all those garrisons there on Taiwan. Summary, damage control advance. Uh, oh, that's a one and done. Okay, so... I think at this point, yeah, it might behoove me to focus on the Grand Battle Doctrine. Uh, let's take a look. Anything that's 1938 tech, we're going to put that in. Because our 30 or older, I should say, 36 there. But 38 or older, I'm going to put in here. That way we can at least try to kind of catch up in that regards. Gain the benefits for all the things that we should be. Oh, and you need to be associated with um, that guy. Yeah. Basing advance. That's a one and done. That's a complete as well. Good to see. All right. So I'm not transporting anything further. Everything is where it needs to be. Um. So here, let's get this going. So you, I'm sending over to there. Okay, let's go ahead and save it real quick here. So at this point, I'm going to start. I'm going <laughs> to. Well, oh, you know what? I better wait till I finish this combat here. Yeah, let's keep going here, and once this combat's finished, then I will go ahead and pull the trigger. Speaking of, um, okay, if you need to then come down here, like so, actually, let me strategically redeploy. Oh, hold on, again, you and then you two guys do a support attack. Uh, you can come down, do a strategic redeploy, and also have you. Support attack. Yeah, nine thousand troops. So yeah. got lucky. They were they were building actual forces, uh, headquarter unit, and a uh, militia or something like that. Um, no, we don't want to. I don't want to trade off any of my benefits just yet. Again, I'm waiting till this wraps up here. You'll, have, you'll gain a headquarter flavor unit representing the leader. So we're going to lose officers. We're going to lose manpower. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, for the rest of the game, we're going to get uh, Tenu Hakai Bonsai, which will give us a 5% IC increase. So an extra 11 IC there. Uh, increase to unity, territorial pride, ruling power support, research efficiency, nice. IC efficiency, nice. Land and naval build times will decrease by 2%. Cool. So where's this Tojo headquarter? All right, we're going to put him under the Quantung as well. Um, it doesn't matter, the leader. It won't matter. Uh... Oh, you know what? We're, yeah, I'm not going to pick you up just yet because, I, again, I don't want to be on board any ships. The reason why I don't want to be on board any ships is the um, when you're on board a ship, you can't change that leader. <laughs> Absolutely refuses you to. Uh, it doesn't allow you to change the leader on there. So I, I, I want to go ahead and change the leader and then ship out the, you know, the units. So that way, while they're in transit, they can regain their org. Oh, come on. Oh, nighttime. I see finish the increased. Uh, we lost Bikini. So, yeah, I lost Bikini, which is all that right there. Not a big deal. <laughs> Maybe that's where we'll handle our uh, um, <laughs> nuclear tests. 
as a joke aside. Okay, so we sh should be good to go now. All right, it's going to hit up here. Um, we'll just go ahead and start from here and say no leader. Basically, you select a unit, click on the leader. Two different ways you can do this. You can click here on the leader name. It, open, it opens this window up. Alternatively, if you can click on their actual uh, portrait, it'll also bring the window up. I only mention that because if you look at the Expeditionary Force, if I click on their name... Absolutely nothing happens. I do not get a leader window. But if I click on their portrait, now I get a leader window. So I don't know if it's something to do with just this Manchu can, uh, Manchurian Expeditionary Force, or it's just Expeditionary Forces in general. I think it's Expeditionary Forces in general. I'm trying to remember playing as Germany when I uh, go Barbarossa and get Hungarian and Romanian units, uh, Expeditionary units. I think I have to do the same thing as well, too. I can't click here. That won't open anything up. I have to click on there on their portrait. But in any event, click either way. Then you say no leader. Wipes all those leaders. It should actually ask, right? Oh, unassign all. Yeah, no leader for that guy. Uh, unassign all. Yes, this is not reversible. And that warning is there, not a big deal for this type of situation right now, but that warning is there in case you're in the middle of combat or something like that. You don't necessarily want to give up all your leaders all at once. <laughs> if, you're, if you're in the you know, say like playing as Germany, it's uh, the start of hostilities against Poland. You don't want to be doing that and, put, and then having to go put leaders on, because when you put a leader on, as we'll see momentarily here, Um, put somebody decent like him. Their organization drops dramatically, and you you just gotta take that org hit. It's about a seventy five percent org hit or whatever. It comes back gradually, of course, but we've got three weeks before we have to, or almost yeah, three and a half weeks before we got war with America. Not a big deal. Everybody will get their work back uh, quickly enough uh, before we need to worry about that. But you don't want to be doing that just before you go to war or while you're in the middle of battle with, uh, you know, with somebody, because boom, now you just really hurt yourself. Uh, and this is why also too kind of want to do it. Oh, they just got new units here, just as I. Oh, how come these guys didn't? Uh, didn't? How come he still has a leader? I did unassign all. Whoa. So does it not? This is the Manchurian expedition. Ah, so it doesn't tell the Manch the your expeditionary forces don't get that unassigned all, which that's fine. Uh, with all with those units that just popped up in here. Here we want to support attack. Actually, there we go. Um. Yeah, I don't want to be attacking there and <laughs> dealing with dealing with, uh, you know, low org or whatever. Okay. Um, so I have to go through each of these individually. Okay. That, that can be done. So here, you know what? Is that going to be that big of a deal? It probably is not. No, you know what? <clears throat> I'll leave them alone. Not a big deal. Kwangtung. For now, this is my main headquarters. Unit. Like I said, I'm trying to remember when war kicks off with America and stuff down the road. I know I get some more head, uh, upper echelon headquarter units. I just remember if I get a theater headquarter unit, but I do feel like I want to get a theater headquarter unit for um, Southeast Asia leave the Kwantung to handle all of this, um, all this, you know, northern area, 
like Dali Nile takes care of the Japanese homeland and, and its associated islands. The Truck Island headquarter, which that's what I created, was a Truck Island headquarter, controls all of the Pacific islands. Um, I think I'll have a Southeast uh, um, Asia commander that's going to handle all this here, probably the Java Islands and Borneo, um, and of course, definitely Burma, India, all that as we go into there. Uh, truck, I think I'll have take care of the, the Philippines might be the defining, dividing line as it were between Southeast Asia and Pacific. I might include the Philippines for a truck maybe, um, but definitely that's the truck island headquarters going to handle all the islands out here, uh, including New Zealand, um, Australia, uh, New Guinea, the Celebes, Cel Celebes, I think is what that area is called. Um, maybe Borneo might make sense. Borneo and Java Island, Southeast Asia. But anyway, <laughs> surmising to myself what I'm thinking of doing. Yeah, the Kranitung Army, even though I moved it down to here, which I kind of did that, not inadvertently, but like, Without fully thinking of the ramifications, maybe just considering that, you know, Quan Tung was going to handle everything, it might be better just to have this handle this theater. There are reasons for that um, that have to do with allowing the AI to take control. Um, you can click that button right here, and it'll place... It'll place um, place under uh, computer control, which I may may end up doing for this area perhaps I don't know I mean I don't mind I don't mind running it I'm not a big you know big proponent of letting letting the AI control everything or whatever but I guess if you want to give yourself a more difficult time sure <laughs> throw it under AI control but for now let's throw the leader here that we kind of want so you can see we have a bunch of leaders that have gained a ton of traits if you look at their skill our highest skill here is Yamashita at, at level 7, but pretty much everybody else, well, there's a bunch of, a uh, couple dozen level 5s, several level 4s, smattering of 3s, quite a bit of level 2s, and the rest are all level 1s. Oh, we got some level 0s as well. I sort by trait, though, just so I can have a better idea of what, you know, what and who's going where type deal. The, um, all these traits, yeah, somebody like uh, the Quintung probably needs all these. But again, if I'm going to end up creating a Southeast Asian theater headquarter with its attendant subcommands, how does that look, by the way? So I could leave him here. He could be, you know, attached to the Quintung theater and handle all the defensive needs. But all all of these guys, uh, him him, would need to move to the Southeast Asian Theater. Um, this guy and this guy would certainly need to move to the Southeast Asian Theater. And I think did I not bring? Probably no, I did. I thought I brought one over here. Yeah, I know I've got a couple. These are more for, again, defensive nature, uh, holding down the uh, the front here. So actually, he's associated with the Quang Tung, and probably because he's he's kind of like my de facto air force leader. That may change down the road, but for right now, that's fine. Okay. So ideally, you want somebody here that's you know high rank, as it were, but mostly is has defensive in nature uh, abilities. So that's what I'm kind of looking for: somebody that's got pretty high level defensive nature. Which you probably oh here we go, perfect. Uh, and offensive, he's an assault master and defensive master. A jungle rat, which is not big of a deal, but logistics wizard means he'll be lowering uh, supply consumption everybody aboard. So we'll go ahead and put him in charge. And again, 
he's going to command right now he commands pretty much everything until we can get to southeast asia and then we'll have um, i'll have another episode where i'm having to do some uh, reassignment of leaders perhaps definitely be creating some uh creating a, a new uh, theater headquarter here and, and thus also dragging all the the theater uh areas that under his control uh his way too um One, two, three, four, five, six. How does he have six under his belt there? I thought you could only get five. I mean, normally it's have five divisions to one core headquarter, five core headquarters to one army headquarter, five army headquarters to whatever level this this is, and then five of these again to theater headquarter. Hey, normally, but maybe maybe you don't have that limitation once you're at this level. Interesting, if that's the case. I know Germany gets a lot of these type of headquarter units uh, early on after uh, in 1939, 1940. Um, a lot of army head or yeah, army headquarters as well. Japan, not so much. You got to create your own for the most part. I mean, they do get some, but not as much as Germany does. Okay, so. We are looking then at which which be easiest here. Actually, you know what? Let's just double check on all the stuff that isn't. Yeah. Oh, so I have something that isn't assigned to the Southern Raider Fleet Command, and that's fine. I will I will dish that dish that out here. This is I mean it's good to go through this because here I'm able to see oh you know I don't have said units assigned to a uh, headquarter unit yet which by the way these are uh, convoy raiders their main primary purpose is sinking uh enemy uh, convoys um do they have it doesn't really say yeah, it doesn't really give any specifics or anything like that you can see the tech that applies to it here um, for the most part it's stuff that this is the big one, trade interdiction. Um, they're just basically hunting down enemy convoys. The type of leader I like to put towards them. Uh, let me see if I can find an example. This guy, the uh, blockade runners, because they've got, um, they come with the speed bonus in every single ocean. Uh, Central, South Atlantic, South Pacific, Indian Ocean. Um, and that disengage timer. That means if they get into a fight, <laughs> you know, they might be able to get away. Um, that's why I just like to use them. The uh, Sea Wolf. Yeah, I mean, it would be probably, they'd probably be really good to give give a Sea Wolf to them. But I like to put Sea Wolf towards the uh, towards the subs. Uh, but anyway, boom! I'll put that leader there just so we have an idea. Uh, so these guys here, so I put these fleet destroyers to the CAGs, uh, just because you can see here they have a naval, cha naval attack and uh, surprise chance. Uh, superior air tactician, sure, just for the experience gain and bonus, that's pretty decent, but I just feel it's, it's better to give them the, the fleet destroyer if it's like a, this is your only choice kind of type deal. Um, huh. Oh, that's right. I had gotten two naval bombers and a flying boat and also like a CAG down in truck. That's right. Um, no, no, that's perfect, actually. You're, you're good to go. <sighs> um, actually, you should be given to the truck island headquarters because... Boom, we have an air unit available there. And I got it. I have yet some more um, reassignment that I've got to do here. Um, oh, so it's Quintung that has that guy. Looking for here, this guy here. Because I have these that I need to put towards truck, towards the, the leader. 
uh, this guy here. Because yeah, these will be these will all be down in that area in the South Pacific. They'll be they'll be flying around my islands in various spots. Um, I'll even, even though this is one naval bomber shy of what I would like it to be at, I'll put it out there as well, too. I'll utilize it. Okay. So we're going to go here as well. Again, there we go. Another fleet destroyer. Uh, if Typically, if it has um, that brigade regiment symbol there, you can't put a leader on there. Like, I don't... Well, I'm not, I'm not going to try on that. Well, man. Yeah. It's all grayed out. You can't put a leader. But when it comes to um, air units, yes, you can. Land units, no, you can't. You need a divisional uh, icon above them to be able to put a, a leader. See, now, now I can put leaders. But we're not going to on those guys. Uh, let's close that up. Not going to worry about putting a leader here on this guy because he's basically he's waiting for a unit to be built around him. And I don't even know what the heck unit I'm going to be building around him. The truck transport. Do I have? I mean, all of my um, armor units should have. Truck transports, and they do. You know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to send him, because I have an armor unit here that doesn't have a headquarter unit. So I'm going to add that veteran headquarter unit to my light armor. It still leaves me four veteran headquarter units and five named heroes. Which also reminds me here, we can, we can work on this a little bit too. Uh, let's do that, and then I can do this. Uh, let's call this the, whoops. First Tyson Shudan. Assigned to that Taishin. Taishin. I misspelled it. There you go. For flavor, more than anything else. Okay. So basically, um, and are you, you know what? That's fine. Your paratroopers, you you go. You get uh, you get the best guys, <laughs> the best leaders. So paratrooper. And uh, a heroic leader type, along with an airborne engineer, um, a uh, motorcycle recon, and a light truck regiment. Would, would actually like mixed. Why did I? So that's basically um, what I did, right? Yeah, the airborne engineer, motorcycle recon, but I kind of wonder. Uh, we probably, yeah, I don't think I have any of the other airborne type stuff that I could use. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Yeah, they're going to be kind of weak, unfortunately. 5,100 plus, um, if I go to here, what is the manpower total? 1,700. Um, so that's 6,800. That's like half strength <laughs> division there. But it's a parachute regiment, or parachute division, half strength division. <sighs> so that's fine. Okay, let's... 
concentrate a bit further here. Let me actually do something a bit simpler. Let's go to the Chuck Allen Garrison here. Uh, we're going to put somebody that's got um, jungle, jungle, something that's high with jungle. Probably not much because we weren't fighting in jungle all that much. Uh, we can go to filters, right click, and that wipes everything out. That way I can go, let me look through here. We're looking for um, jungle rat. Here we go. Tomoyuki Yamashita, but I think I want to put him in charge of the um, soon-to-be-built, eventually to be built, Southeast Asia, because historically that's where he was. But also, being a jungle master, and assault master, engineer, trickster, all that I think will do very well for that area. Here we have marine, jungle rat. Marine for amphibious attack and fort attack. We'll put uh, Kazuo in charge. Or would actually Tanaka be better? Oh, yeah. Let's do Tanaka. I could save uh, Kazuo for my uh, army headquarter. Um, Marine army headquarter unit leader. Because he has the Marine capability. That it would trickle down to uh, everybody. All the Marines underneath him. So we'll put uh, Tanaka in charge because he has the Jungle Master and also our military police. So um, I know that's a negative descent impact reduction of negative 80%. I want to say that's actually a bonus, though. I could be wrong. Usually, uh, red always pretty much always means that's a, that's a malice. It's a negative modifier, bad modifier. <laughs> But yeah, we'll put Tanaka in charge of Truck Island headquarters. Um, let's handle some of these garrisons here. It doesn't matter, really doesn't matter who I put. But I, uh, so to redo it right now, it's only looking at Jungle Rat people, which by the way would also include Jungle Master. While I have the option to select Jungle Master, uh, if you're looking for for that particular leader type, the the jungle, you know, somebody that's good in jungle. To select jungle rat, because if you're a jungle rat, you can become jungle master, and I think there's jungle wizard on top of that, which is one level above. You know, it's even even better there. Which, if we look at him, uh, oh, maybe I'm wrong. No, no, I think I'm right on that. <laughs> After Master is Wizard, or maybe it's Genius. Maybe there's only two levels of that, though. I thought there were three levels that you could get. And the difference, of course, is, like, for Jungle Rat, 2% uh, speed bonus, 7% attack defense bonus. Jungle Master, this is not cumulative. This is what it goes up to. It's 3% speed bonus now instead of 2 in jungles. And instead of a 7% attack defense bonus, it's a 10% attack defense bonus. I could swear there's a third level to that, though. I could swear. I shouldn't swear. It's bad for me. Um, but anyway, so if you're done looking for that particular type, and now, like, for this, this, I, for this garrison, I need something cheap. You can just right-click here. Boop. All goes away. Yeah, so I guess it's just two levels. Like Trickster, you got Trickster, and then Master Trickster. You got Logistics Wizard, and then Logistics Master. I know there's Genius level stuff too, but it's like, you know, whatever whatever the other was first, then Genius, um, genius is even higher than that. Uh, anyway, boom. Uh, we're just going to put the the worst leader possible if you will into here just out of curiosity so that leader is actually involved in stuff that one too which doesn't really surprise me a lot of my garrisons the these low level uh leaders that don't have any traits typically i've been using them for garrison units that really you know they're not going to be doing much they're not going to be involved in anything but sometimes, as it appears, my garrisons do get involved in hunting down uh, rebels and stuff like that, like this guy. He had a, 
he got some experience because he has a 0.2% progress towards logistics wizard and 0.1% towards logistics master. So, yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of, there's my army headquarter. So where's the marine guy that I saw? A bit, yeah, he's a bit further down here. Actually, you know what? We're not gonna we're not gonna play with that. We right click on uh, once clicking on filters to open this window up. Right click on no traits, and we're gonna go down to marine. So we are gonna put this guy in charge. And he actually is really good. I mean, he's probably the best choice overall. Did he have any work on Marine? Next level Marine? Doesn't look like it. Did any of these guys have? I mean, there's Marine. Well, there's, yeah, there's extra levels. I can see it here. Marine, Marine Master, Marine Genius. So there are, there's three levels. Probably not for everything, but it looks like for almost everything. Just looking to see if I have anybody that was working their way. Okay, this guy, 27.3% to Marine Master. Okay, that's cool. But I'll put him in charge because he has like so many cool abilities here. Master Trickster, you know. Logistics master there. Uh, yes, so he'll be in charge there. And then each of these guys, I'm just going to go, we're just going to go top to bottom, you know, like this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Um, I am going to... We're going to pull a couple of Marines out of each. The first and the second, and feed them into the third and fourth. So that way, kind of spread the love around a little bit. Okay, next now we shall go. Uh, we're still working in Marines here. Um, I'm not going to have any more Marine headquarter units or anything like that. So quite honestly, it just behooved me to take the top to bottom. For, for my Marines as, as they come up, um, just because, yeah, he was actually in charge of one of the, like the first or the second, <laughs> um, only because I just want the best. I don't, I don't need to worry about the worst. Uh, so I'm not going to have any more Marine headquarter units that I'll create. Um, I'll still research the Marine, Marine HQ technology just so I get the additional advantages that provides me. <laughs> But when it comes time and says, do you want the, the attendant, you know, headquarter units that go with this research, I'm going to say no. Save the manpower and resources. But I will be building five, at least five more Marines. Um, if not well yeah 10 marines 10 more marines would be kind of silly i think i'll be building these five marines i don't think i get any more marines for free i could be wrong on that there may be a couple more marines that i still get so yeah but anyway we're going from top to bottom here just taking taking the best guys that has all these all these traits um it doesn't really matter because there's no um there's no one of these medals or orders or anything like that that gives amphibious invasion. I think there used to be. There's like a order of the golden crane or something like that. But I think that's been done away with now. Looking to see if there if there's a new looking at those those particular metals. Here we go. Order of the Rising Sun. 
okay, that's what it is. Amphibious attack of 10%. So no, they didn't get rid of it. So that's what I'll add to that guy. And again, I could search for that. Um, Order of the Rising Sun. <laughs> Don't even see it here, yet obviously there's one leader that has the Order of the Rising Sun. <coughs> Hmm. That might be what I'm thinking about is the order of the golden kite that has naval attack. <laughs> that might be what I'm what I thought of the golden grain. Uh, but Order of the Rising Sun. Order of the Rising Sun. Nope. Can't find it. Um, but it should be no more than... No more than three traits. So once we get into the three trait area, here, oh, what does it look like? Like the Eye of Sauron. <laughs> that right there. Okay. All right. So that bonus, the uh, it gives a two percent bonus. or 10% bonus to amphibious attack. Boogie bonus points, I call it. So I'm just spinning through this looking for that particular um, metal. It's like a round silvery thing. I'd have to mention, too, that you can't get it, uh, these orders and things like that. I don't think you can get them. I think that's just simply, you know, that's what your that's what the leader starts with. The other, like this, Logistics Wizard, yes, you can certainly get that. But I don't think the orders you can. Oh, there's another Order of the Rising Sun. Cool, cool. And is there another one? I'll go to the very bottom here and kind of go up. There is indeed beautiful. So far, so good there. Uh, so now it's in the two, two trait range. Uh, I'm not going to spin through. It does randomize. So the the way these, it's not uh, not sorted by name. I just have it sorted by traits at this point. Um, so each time I restart to look through, it just randomizes where the leader actually goes since I have it uh, sorted by trait. I wish it sorted by trait and the name after that or by skill or something like that. Be, you know, take do it in a couple of ways, but it is what it is. Game engine, not, not modification issue. Just the way the game engine handles it. What are these? Uh, oh, so these are the order of the golden kite. Naval attack plus 3%. I have to remember that. Fleet concentration minus 3%, though. So I wonder if like this would be great for 
um, say it just my my destroyer groups. Okay, so that's it. No, no other, no others. Um, that that said, Japanese Navy generals automatically get a two percent amphibious attack. So I would have to imagine that's additive since they're they're separate traits, which what might almost mean that the um, the others might be additive too. When you go to you know wizard to master genius level, those might be additive as well. All right, uh, I'm just going to add you. So all my Marines are done at this point in time. Uh, next step, my air. And it doesn't really matter. I had to right click to remove. Doesn't matter who I put in charge here, but I want to put a logistics and or maybe defensive. So let's actually do it here like so. Logistics and defensive at the same time would be great. Now I could go in here in filters and I could check those two that I want. Uh, you can you can go through filters uh, after you uncheck everything or you selectively uncheck things. You can check as many as you want. It'll, it'll throw all those traits up for you. So like this case, I could do that, but this is for one singular guy. I'm not going to do that for one singular guy. Take, I think it would take more time to try to find logistics and defensive than it is for me to find the actual guy. The reason for this, logistics wizard supply con consumption, yay, you know, reduce that. High defense as well, increased defense as well. Army general, sure. Um, now with all these guys... So I just want, I want not Fleet Destroyer and not Tank Buster. So like this guy for starters, Superior Air Tactician, sure. Uh, we could put him, I mean, yeah, these don't really, supply consumption I think will will convey, but I don't think anything else here. The experience point gain will, will certainly convey, but I don't think anything else does. It's strictly these these air. Blue is for um, naval units. This um, pea soup green, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what color you would call that. Jade color. I don't know. Something that's even lighter than that. That's for your air units. And then this tan color is for your is for your land units. So air, land, sea. Um, but we are going to go ahead and give you to him there. And because we're going to build up on you, we're going to do that. Uh, you already got somebody. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that and that okay so almost done with truck at this point in time almost so for him I want a defensive minded guy and also um, well just defensive minded he strictly has garrison units under his con control command here <clears throat> but that said when it comes time for the um, to start moving into Truck Island <laughs> campaign territory, I will need to put somebody else um, in charge here because I know him. I have attached directly to Truck Island headquarters. <sighs> Can I even attach? Yeah, no, it won't even, won't even let me attach it to there. So I actually I need another whatever level headquarter group this is. It's above Army headquarter, but below the Supreme you know, the theater headquarter command, whatever level that is, I need one more. So that way I can put uh, these two headquarter units under him to kind of better, better provide that, not provide, but to show that command and control type setup. That said, role playing purposes, this is fine. You know, that, that's okay. The, uh, it'll show how, Let's say how crazy the uh, Japanese command structure is. Uh, 
take a swig of water, sorry. Anyway, so it doesn't really matter how high of a level he is. In fact, actually, this is probably a good area they were in. For defensive, order the kite. So these should be additive, 7% plus 10%, that's 17% plus uh, Japanese Armor General, so that's a 20% defensive bonus. It should be additive. All right, going through all the uh, garrisons. Doesn't really matter. Just put the lowest level in. They're not going to see much, um, especially out here on the islands. They're, it's going to be a wonder if they see any kind of activity whatsoever. <laughs> At least that's my fervent hope. <laughs> It's quite possible that uh, we'll run into a situation that uh, the Americans actually attack me. What the heck? Boom. Yeah, wrong. I wasn't trying to add you. I was trying to... There we go. Kind of increase all these a little bit. They don't immediately show up to me. I'll be ending the episode pretty quickly here because, again, I don't want you guys to have to sit through all this. You can see I've only done, at this point here, granted, a lot of talking on my part, but I've still have only done one theater. And it's the small, it's relatively the smallest at this point. So, Quantung, yeah, can you just imagine me sitting around doing that for uh, an hour and a half? I mean, if you guys are masochistist in that in that way, okay. All right, so that should be everybody there and everybody there. So that is done. Uh, we could uh, uh, let's take Dalian L real quick. Again, this is just the Japanese homeland and islands. We need um, defensive in nature. I don't know if I have anybody that's a defensive. Um, I don't have anybody that's an offensive master at this point. Uh, what's the next level? Defensive genius, defensive master. I think defensive master would be the next step up. But you don't have defensive period anything. I mean, you've got offensive doctrine. You don't even have defensive doctrine. That's what I'm looking for. Somebody's got a defensive doctrine. I don't see. Uh, and also military police would be great, too. Let's do this. Uh, there we go. Defensive Doctrine. Um, well, he is way up there. Oh, you know. Yeah, I wasn't looking cl uh, closely enough. Um, we don't need to go quite up that high. Again, this is for just the Japanese homeland here. We could do him, perhaps, because of what he what he has these guys are pretty much both the same he has well they both have fortress buster but yeah let's do that there we go not terribly concerned with who I'm putting here per se I mean they're not going to be involved too much in offensive operations just against rebels and honestly usually rebels come with like you know zero org or something like that their strength is so low that it's like you you run you run them over real quick but I there are times when you know yeah you might have a little bit of a fight going on so there is a chance of some of these guys in our, in our defensive area here to gain enough experience to improve. I highly doubt it, though. 
<laughs> Highly doubt it. Yeah, when I build that uh, Southeast Asia headquarter and make all the adjustments, move, you know, groups over to that, then the Kwantung Theater indeed will take charge of the north up here, and I will put all the defensive units onto the, you know, everybody that's here in China will get and Korea will get put onto that uh, Kwantung Theater and its associated commands underneath it. For now, though, this is this is kind of the way it's just going to be. Sure, ten percent defense. Order the kites, fine. But no need to have fortress buster or offensive major for strictly defensive units. Experience gains also fine too. Uh, even better are those, um, the, the gray, which uh, I should have hovered over so you guys have a, a chance to see. Old Guard. They do have a, uh, God, stop moving, mouse. They do have a 10% defense, uh, dig in bonus, and four defense as well. They take malices to attack, offense, attack speed, and experience gain. And that's fine. I'm, I'm honestly quite fine with that for defensive units. You're not going to see much anyway, so it's like why bop, you know, why why worry about uh, experience point gain? Oh, appreciate you guys certainly watching along on this here. Again, I'm sorry it's so boring. We the next uh, pretty soon I'll be ending the episode. So I'll continue this off camera just because there's so much stuff. The Quaint Tongue Theater alone is going to take you know, like I said, probably almost an hour to handle there. Um, the um, the next episode though far more exciting. I can tell you that because it'll be the it'll be the month before we finally go to war. That will constitute a lot of um, placement of my units, uh, getting getting units staged and ready. Uh, air units will move to their forward locations. Uh, fleets as well, for the most part, will get moved to their their next location. Uh, so there'll be a lot of that going on, and then hopefully that won't take terribly long. Hopefully I don't just go blathering on like I am at this point. Oh, that was a yeah, you're defensive, um, and we'll actually get in, in stuck in <laughs> to the whole entire attack on America there, and, and we'll see what the differences are. At least I will see what the difference are between normal, what I'm used to, because, you know, the Allies are, nor are the whole entire war went off like, like it did historically, as opposed to now, where we're in alt history here. Um, like I said, we're not going to be going to war with the Netherlands right off the bat. That's, that's somebody we're going to have to actually, I feel, we will have to declare war on. Uh, which will then drag Germany into the war with the uh, Netherlands, which, like I said, that will it'll be very interesting to see exactly what transpires because of all the earlier choices and difference, differences that were made uh, at the beginning of this uh, campaign here. I, I, trust me, uh, you know, there's times I've, I've played games like this where it's like, you know, something ahistorical like what just happened here. Uh, does happen. I oh, have two anti-aircraft. I need to break one off. So we're going to have you go. I know there's somebody down here that could probably uh, use anti-aircraft. Yeah, down there. Um, there's been plenty of campaigns that I've done that uh, <laughs> were very ahistorical. Oh, not quite done. They were in Delaney. There we go. Um, and there's times where I've been like, ah, I'm just going to restart because you know things are going, you know, too <laughs> too far different than I'm comfortable with here at this point. But I'm happy to be going through this with you guys and 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 just doing this, you know, as it is, you know, going through and just be going, okay, let's roll with the punch here and see what uh, <laughs> what transpires. Uh, Going to skip that one one unit there with all the all the ships here. 
I think we'll do that. Uh, I'll do that off camera here. Uh, again, trying to pick unit, pick uh, leaders that have traits that are more conducive to a defensive stance. I don't need, you know, don't need offensively natured heroes, uh, leaders running, uh, running garrison units out in the middle of nowhere. And I, this is something I do for like, no matter what country I'm playing, uh, whatever nation I'm playing there. Germany, for example, about a month before war with uh, Poland there, I'll go through and, and redo, um, redo my leaders there as well. I'm actually just actually working on a campaign right now playing as Germany where I decided not to do that. Where I was like, let me just let the dice, you know, let me just go see what happens if I just go with the leaders that get automatically assigned. It's interesting. I mean, there's nothing, you know, nothing terribly weird to report or anything like that, but it's just like, I just want to try something a little bit different to see, you know, what, what transpires there. But yeah, I do this for, for all my countries just so I can put uh, what I feel are the appropriate leaders to uh, to uh, to a unit. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really matter who I put. We will, do I have a, looking for not army, but naval. There we go, like this guy. Um, he's a Marine, but you know what? That's fine, that's fine. Put him in charge. He's more defensive nature, so it doesn't really matter, you know, who all is there. Um, this, it kind of doesn't really matter at all who I put, but let's put in somebody here. So those are both my carrier group guys. I'm looking for, this is fine. So let's put it up to four, right? <laughs> Command 24 ships. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so somebody down this way, like here, but we need to do two because we need to command five ships. Oh. I thought their command. Hmm. I thought that was done differently. I guess not. I didn't realize they could command quite so many ships. Passenger liners, I don't need a top line admiral running running a fleet of passenger liners. Um, so this destroyer navy, we'll put somebody like him. Spotter for spotting chance, surprise chance, you know, capability. It's weird that they could control 20 ships. I don't remember that being like that. I thought it was like, I thought it was uh, three, five, seven, ten. Was the amount of ships that um, each rank could control. So when did that change? Hmm. Or did it change? And I just never, never spotted it. So yeah, I'm too used to hitting, hitting it three times just to be able to control a, uh, a group of seven. Uh, we don't need to give anybody to things. The next two groups of um, landing craft ships we're gonna we're gonna put there all right doesn't matter who i put here it's just a flavor text guy we'll put him just because his logistics wizard supply consumption now we are i need to go to filter these are all our subs um sea wolf The uh, long range subs, I try to put the best leaders in. And this regular subs as well, I'll try to kind of do the same in there. There we go. And the uh, coastal subs, we'll still put uh, sea wolves, but I'm only going to be putting the, the lowest. Uh, those only have sea wolf and, and naval admiral.
because I, I have to imagine the coastal subs will be among the first type of subs that I'll end up losing. But they're typically not the best. They don't have all the bells and whistles that uh, the long range and regular subs tend to do. And bet your patooties that the uh, midget subs are only getting the, the, the low end leaders as well. In fact, yeah, the midget subs, I need to make sure I save. Skipping the, um, uh, the raiders for a moment here because I need to take care of the sub guys first. Because there's a particular type of leader that I prefer to have for um, the raiders, uh, not not the sea wolves. Which I I mean I guess I could see putting a sea wolf leader in charge. It's just I don't think I don't feel it's the best leader type. Okay, so now we'll go to the convoy raider here. Uh, leader, clear that. Go to filters. Boom, and we are looking for blockade runner. The reason is that that disengage time and speed bonus received. Um, I am saving. Let's let's go to the very bottom, work our way up. Because with the convoy raiders, again, I don't need. It's just they're like they're like coastal subs. I feel um, they don't need the best. And I'm glad I saw that he was in a totally different area. I need to move him. Try to keep everybody in the same area, just that way. I know where they're at, and I can, I can touch them there. You know. Okay, so now we can start using these three trait guys. That's fine. I want to leave. So these guys, I would like to utilize for my carrier group leaders for the two reasons there the speed bonus in the south pacific and indian ocean is going to be immense and that disengage timer if my carriers get in get um caught up in a naval battle <laughs> with you know an enemy fleet i want them to be able to get out i don't want i don't want them trying to trade shots, which actually wouldn't even be them, it'd be their attendant uh, light cruisers trying to trade shots with uh, the enemy fleet. Okay, so that should be all these guys here. Cool, cool. Pressing on with... <coughs> Clear out our filters by right-clicking again. I don't care. Again, I'm just amazed at that a one star can command 12, 12 ships. That's like weird. Uh, we'll put you in charge. Torpedo boats, I don't need the best leaders, but I would like them to have the um, spotter uh, trait just for that spotting chance, surprise chance. Uh, torpedo boats can absolutely wreck your day. So, <laughs> I mean... The AI, you know, they know where you where you are. They, there's no there's no tiptoeing around the the AI. But if I if I can utilize them, uh, if, if I'm able to utilize them effectively against the uh, the enemy, oh, I have that guy still. Uh, they can put a hurting on even capital ships. Uh, this guy doesn't really matter who I put in charge. Um, there we go. Put this guy. He's a logistics wizard. I know he's a marine as well, but that's okay. So, saw you, hear you. Um, actually, do we want you to have the best? Shikaku and Zuikaku are, are my best carriers at this point in time, quite honestly. Though the Soryu has a higher strength level. That's interesting. 
Kage, even more than Kage Kage. Um, yeah, you know what? That 261%, that's not something to sneeze at. So here, I like to put the blockade, you know, high, and also a superior tactician. Just those are all big bonuses to be able to give to, uh, to your best there. Kage and Kage is at 216, so we'll go here with the Shikaku Zuikaku. Do that. Oh, which reminds me, I gotta break open each. Yeah, I gotta go ahead and do each of these. So again, looking for fleet destroyers. Just uh, for my CAG, I'll just put the best fleet destroyers on. That's fine. Um, and Junio and soon to be Hayu, uh, we'll put them on. All right. And what do we got here? There we go. All right. Going from top to bottom here. Again, we want a blockade runner. There's not too many left. So at that point, then, once I run out of blockade runners, uh, I'll probably have to figure what a good secondary option is. Probably the uh, superior tactician, just because that's a uh, that's a decent, you know, getting experience is also pretty good. I mean, if you can get experience that works towards getting blockade runner, hey, <laughs> that is pretty, uh, pretty worthwhile effort to go for. Okay, again, I will apologize that this is as boring as it potentially could be, but that you too playing probably, I, I mean, you know, if, if you playing this also do the same thing let me know let me know if there's any uh, tips tricks that you might use to you know handle this kind of re reassessment of leadership is there anything different that you that you do that you're seeing that you know i've been doing oh the kaga and the kagi here i totally forgot oh, look at the last one of the blockade runners um i would certainly like to to learn i know that there are some third party um, applications there's like a, a modification maybe not necessarily a modification but there's some sort of like excel third party thing um yeah, i'll clear that out third party thing that allows you to um open it up it'll import your import the oob so you could then um I say it's Excel, but it's not really Microsoft Excel. It's just kind of, it's a database manipulator. Um, you can then do all the stuff in it that you need to, save it, and then uh, place that file into your game. <clears throat> and then load up the game here and boom, your OOB is all, you know, uh, all handled nicely. It's supposed to be, as far as I understand it, or at least it was at the time, it was uh, much easier to, to deal with than what I'm doing right now. This going through one by one type deal. I, I don't know the specifics, never play with it myself, so I don't know, you know what all it could do. But that was the information that I, I heard about in regards to that uh, that particular particular software. Um, I think at this point I may just well no we got a couple more. The Quang Tongue, we'll I'll leave that aside. We're not gonna I'm not gonna touch that this episode at all. We're going to call the game. <laughs> so that way I don't bore you guys too much more. And for our almost at two and a half hours, I, I will admit we spent most of the time just you know. Talking and redoing uh, my whole entire uh, OOB order of battle. So not the most exciting of things to be watching here. And just choosing non-offensive 
type of traits for leaders for all these garrison troops. I'm also, anytime that these type of, you know, I hear is like, you know, that, that many traits, I bump up their, uh, their rank. Just that way, I, it doesn't really pull my eye. I think, oh, I could use that kind of unit here. Save them, save them for again the higher headquarter units. Oh, did I not do that? I thought I did that guy. Maybe I was not paying close enough attention as I thought. All right, we're almost finished with the Dalinay. Okay, it's not all doom and gloom, Tom. Chill out there, buddy. Still, Quine Tung Theater. That's going to be a buttload. Buttload of stuff that I got to deal with. Okay, so this is strictly for the most part garrison units and things like that that he's, he's controlling. So we just need some sort of leader that's handling defensive type stuff. And it, it can be way down here. That's fine. Like something like him, actually. He's got military police. Let us put him in charge. All right. So that will do it for right now. Um, yeah, I got so much stuff to do here in the Quang Tongue. I will do that off screen, off camera there. So like I said, we're not boring you out. The good news is, and before we leave here, we'll take a quick spin throughout to see what's going on in the rest of the world, but also, you know, kind of overlook and see what, what we've got happening here. We're just we're just laying low for the next three and a half weeks here. Uh, we're just crushing whatever the ROC decides to pop up uh, here in Chengdu and any rebels that seem to pop up. Once we hit uh, December seventh, there we're going to war with, or maybe just the day before, go to war with America. There we'll move into Chengdu. So we on December seventh, boom, Pearl Harbor Day, war with America. Moving to Chengdu, we can uh, we can. Um, get the, uh, the, the uh, China Nanjing nation up and uh, get the, the coastal. But again, that's a timing issue that I'm not quite sure the best way to do. So I may have to like load up, you know, save just before, see what happens. Maybe might have to load up and then change the order that I do things in. But what I want is the ROC to take over pretty much everywhere except for the coastal areas that I will keep. My IC is going to drop down to about, about here, maybe 375 actually is where might be closer because we're at 1,500 days of IC um, debt left. So that's 11 more days that we got to spend. So November 23rd, that'll leave two final weeks of full full IC expenditure down uh, expenditures down the board here. Uh, fortunately, at the end of the month here, we'll be getting these two guys completed at 16 IC. Uh, and at the end of the month, this um, paratroop regiment there. So, yay, we'll, we'll be getting some stuff freed up. Uh, this fighter fighter wing will also free up another 9 IC. Once once we're, once I've got all that done, like I said, next episode, just make sure that I got finish all my, all my leader assignments. Um, deploy, we'll start next episode, start deploying out. Where we need to be just to get ready stage up get get our troops in their positions um, i only need well we got like i said three and a half weeks that's plenty of time for me to move marines to where they need to go um, figure out which um, units um, divisions i'm going to be sending to where for you know how many i need to send to philippines etc um, stage units i need to get ready to go to southeast asia uh, get my ships um, moved out to their places that they need to kind of set up at. Mostly subs, just because they're decreased range. Carriers, they have such immense range here, 3,700 kilometers. You can see how far we can go. We can almost, almost make it to Hawaii. We can make it out to here and start patrolling. So... You know, we can leave our car our carriers back on in Tokyo and do patrols around Wake, Midway, uh, and other. Uh, we can make it out now. Can't make it to the Johnston Atoll. Um, 
almost that far. How far south, by the way? So, yeah, we can actually patrol out to our islands in defensive nature. Um, we can actually even get to uh, Nauru. Nauru, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we can get to Johnston. That's that's uh, too far. That's all too far. Uh, we can get down to here. We can even get to New Guinea, Bismarck Sea area. Uh, we can get all the way. We can patrol all the way down to here, uh, down to Java and that area. So I can leave my leave my carriers where that at where they are at. Destroyers have a 2,500 kilometer range. Um, capital ships I'm not quite sure on but we'll get that figured out uh, would that tell me what the range is 3900 kilometers for battleships so about the capital ships pretty much have um, well the capital ships have the same range as my carriers and light cruisers the problem is destroyers have that uh, short range and I guess it's because the of the older ships the newer destroyers at least level four have 3100 so we could do yeah we could also send them down to Java and do patrols patrol all along here north coast of New Guinea can maybe have them patrol all the way out to uh, to Midway so we can pretty much leave our ships in stationed at port is just the subs I need to move up torpedo boats the um, Oh, mini subs, the uh, motor torpedo boat that I have here. Um, and all our planes need to get pushed for need to get pushed forward a bit. Um, planes that are going to Southeast Asia, which will be our CAS, the fighter bombers, um, those uh, uh, with the exception of one fighter, one um, CAS wing, those I'll just let them sit where they're at until we've got bases in Siam. Once I have bases in Siam, then I'll fly out because when we fly and land, that takes organization away. Uh, but I will drop a CAS over here on uh, Tinian Island there. Um, things are going. Nothing's really, yeah, nothing's really changed here. I don't see any differences around. I'd be surprised to see Malta fall. <laughs> That would just be a shocker. I honestly, I can't wait until I go to war with America because I'm really interested to see when I declare on the Netherlands, which won't be immediate. It'll be probably within a month because I want to make sure I've gotten my Marines. To, um, they do what they need to do in the Philippines, land my army forces to take take over, and then uh, my Marines will make landings in Borneo finish that up and then uh, land more army units there for Borneo then I could see to getting getting my Marines ready to uh, make naval assaults on uh, Java um, Palem near Palembang and then declaring on the Netherlands At that point it'd be interesting to see what Germany does what happens here will it be uh, oh my gosh you know, Germany wasn't ready, or what? <sighs> Doing well up here. It's good to see, you know, that uh, Finland's been making some moves. They've actually, Germany's made some big moves up here, I see. Um, Moscow, how close are we now? 166 kilometers. The closest, yeah, down south here. Wow. And it looks like they might be pushing towards the River Don indeed. Uh, they really... Okay, so they have, they've gone up here. I thought they crossed the River Don. It's here, but look, maybe they didn't. Um, same situation here. Actually, Russia pushed back here. Got Kirch back from Germany. The uh, Sevastopol garrison's holding tight where they're at so mm. well August, September, October, November it's been four months roughly uh, three and a half months since Barbarossa kicked off I think 
the I think Germany gains the benefits and the Soviet Union gets the uh, malices, the negatives for Barbarossa for just a period of three months, I think. So that would kind of stand to reason about now Germany's pushes would kind of peter out and the Soviet Union might have some opportunities ahead of them. I do appreciate you guys following me on this campaign here. Really, really do. Provide, like I said, let me know what, what you thought, uh, especially if there's any any uh, thing that you do different in regards to changing out leaders and stuff like that. Next episode, I promise, will be far more exciting. We'll finish. I'll finish up the uh, Quintung um, Theater leader uh, assortment off camera here, so we're not taking another hour more. But we'll be, we will be making moves and finally attacks against the United States next episode. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. Bye.